Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lex Talk World Talk Show presented by Clickaway Creators. Today, we have Mr. Yogesh V. Nair with us. Yogesh has been practicing law from the past 26 years, pursued law from University College of Law, Nagpur University, in the year 1993, and stood in merit. Since March 1994, practicing as lawyer and serving in the field of law with proven success. Practicing before Supreme Court of India, High Court of Judicature at Bombay, Original Bench, Bench at Nagpur, High Court of Uttarakhand, High Court of Punjab and Haryana with offices in New Delhi, Mumbai, Nagpur and Nenital with clientele presence in UK, USA, Germany, UAE and India. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Nair. We are pleased to have you with us today. Thank you so much. Thank All you. right, so Namaskar. Namaskar. Since we have you on the board today, uh, we would like to ask you if you can please uh, brief us about your journey so far as a legal professional. Well, uh, my journey to that effect, as I would say, and as you have asked, uh, I'm a first lawyer in my family. That is what it is. I don't have any kind of a backing as any kind of a person who happened to be a lawyer in my family. So I started way back in the year 1990 when I pursued law. In fact, things were very absolutely different. I, in fact, wanted to be into the defense services at the very point of time. I got selected as well. But then ultimately, my parents had a very different kind of a view and I chose a very different kind of a line. And that was not expected. But then, yes, by the blessings of Almighty, Mahavashnurani, the things have been very different for me. And uh, since 1990, continuously, I have been taking up things quite seriously. And as it is, as what you asked, that how has been my journey? And because I don't have or I had any person as such in my family who happened to be a lawyer who could guide me at that particular point of time, or even otherwise as on time, you may say. But then the things were like this, that... Uh, it, it, I, I would say that, that it was blessing of Almighty that, that God ultimately directed me to a particular kind of a thing to look to those particular people who are there sitting on the top. And that is what I was quite surprised with, that what ultimately made them get onto that particular position, that they are sitting on such kind of a position as on time. So that is what I used to study. And though despite the fact that I did not have much of time to meet them or I had not, I did not have an opportunity, honestly speaking, because they happen to be very different kind of people and uh, they would not make me stand at that particular point of time to be very honest. But then looking to all those particular aspects, that is what has helped me a lot. And it entirely changed the course of my life so far as the legal profession is concerned and uh, my journey has been, by the blessings of Almighty, has been very different. It has always been guided by the, my Almighty. It is, it is not me that I control my office. It is my Almighty who controls the office. That is what it is. I am just merely sitting there as a caretaker and uh, looking to things what I am commanded and what I am directed to do. That's how it is. Absolutely great. Can you tell us a little bit more about nominated and appointed as member of International Council of Jurists? Yeah. Uh, well, basically, the thing is that because I have, I'm practicing not only onto the national and the international part, at that particular point of time, I have been, as it is, I said, that I have been quite curious about things and I keep on doing research as to what all are the organizations which are there so that I can give my, uh, some portion of service. So that is where when I was uh, looking to all these particular kind of things, so I landed up uh, with the, the ICDT part of it, that is the International Commercial Dispute Tribunal, which is there in Geneva. And uh, similarly with the International Council of Jurists, I was quite hesitant, rather I would say that, that I was uh, not very sure that, that I would be the person who would be selected and nominated as one of the member, because not only the fees part of it is quite high, high and hefty, or then they have their own criteria. But then it's the blessing of Almighty that last year I got nominated and selected by ICJ. They had their very different kind of criteria. I was uh, quite hesitant, not rather hesitant, but then I was not sure that whether I would be really selected. But then ultimately when I applied and I have uh, I was screened, the, the uh, nomination is basically, the membership is basically for one year, but then ultimately I don't know what ultimately made them to give me a membership of five years. So uh, that is what it was. 
and it was quite uh, surprising for me but then that has helped me a lot more to add on to my things to look on to the international laws those are there prevailing and uh, analyzing the basic basically because uh, icja basically does the analysis of the laws those are there prevalent in many country that's what it is so i'm just trying to be part of it doing my best trying my level best to give my best of the things and in the form of the services what i can and i could that's what isn't is. that amazing isn't that amazing people often say that uh, uh, braves are blessed and exactly this is what we can see in your example you know uh, being the first generation lawyer from the family and you know uh, we understand that uh, having somebody in your family being a lawyer in the past really adds a lot of value to a newcomer who's coming to the industry but you being the first generation lawyer and being so brave that uh, taking that as a challenge for your life and putting in your really best of the efforts really took you you know to this greater level today and once again congratulations from my side to you on this on this great journey and thank you so much for thank you, so much. Uh, you know sharing that with us moving on to the next next question uh, and now we would like to talk about uh, you know one of your memorable case so can you please tell us about one of your most memorable case and what are your key takeaways from there well memorable cases there are many memorable cases wherein i have had challenge to that effect when i started my career like as i said because many a time like as i said earlier i'm being very honest i normally used to think because being a uh, first generation lawyer of my family i always used to think basically that why is it like this that only these particular people who are the either the headshots or those who are there on top they are only the people who are basically in the position that they are being elected or they are being nominated or uh, they are being appointed to contest the matters and i was just thinking i was there in court at that particular point of time it was sunday and there was some one case particularly that happened it was a himani group case that took place and the remand was to uh, was brought on sunday and i was just thinking and i just thought and i i just had a word with my god matarani and i said that uh, if given a chance once at least i'll prove myself and within a week it was like this that that i started and i i got to have an opportunity and that is how it started but then memorable cases are many and my only part is that what i believe in is that i need to give my 100% to either any any of the cases because there is no discrimination to it what i understand is that any person who's coming to you as a uh, as a client he or she is not coming to you just for the heck of it like we don't go to the to a doctor just for the heck of it we basically go for the purpose of a physical ailment that is what we have got and that is what the principle that is what i have been following and that is what uh, that is what the thing is and as i said because my office is basically ruled by the the uh, commands of uh, ma vaishnav rani so i am nowhere so nowhere in the sense that that i have to follow that particular command i have to abide with all those particular things i have to be dead honest and uh, dead principle no corruption absolutely nothing i don't believe in all those particular things and so far as the cases are concerned as to what you said memorable case yes uh, i have uh, been successful in procuring stay to the uh, smart city operations those were there implemented by the government of india and uh, there are many such cases the triple talaq case which uh, was there the initiative of it though despite the the particular part that uh, triple talaq was discussed and it came to be abolished later point of time by by the apex court but then howsoever the basic part is that that even as on time the rights of the muslim women have not been discussed subsequent to divorce part of it so that is what one of the most important issue that was there which i contested before nanital high court and let us see how things go on so there are many such kind of cases so i just want to add on to things i am not the person but then ultimately i pray to almighty that there should always be an add on to things that's what it is no absolutely and uh, as i said before you know you have been brave enough to uh, contest on on those cases and obviously uh, the blessings of them automatically come to the braves moving on to the next question sir uh, and i would like to talk about uh, the intellectual property law uh, as of today in 2021 how do you think how it's going to change in the next 5 years down the line see the basic part is that uh, so far as the intellectual property is concerned i see a diversified kind of a thing though wipo is there the african organization is there that is what it is the mexico part is there but then ultimately the thing is that there need to be a unanimous uh, unanimousness 
See, every country has got a law. That is one part of it. WIPO does uh, implement laws. They frame laws. But then they are basically on the basis of the conventions those are taking place. Now, the thing is that as on time, that is what is going on. If we see uh, every country, because they have got different laws. See, intellectual property is not a kind of a thing wherein you can have different kind of laws for every different country. There need to be one particular law that can be implemented thoroughly, truly all over the world. That is what is my perception. Because more the diversified laws are there, and uh, the, the more you make it diverse, it becomes very difficult. From country to country, it becomes very difficult. Every person has to understand and uh, pick up the laws. The more they are simple, but not, not only that, but then they need to be very stringent as well. That is what it is. So as on time, what I see is that, so far as intellectual property is concerned, though despite the patents are going on, everything is going on, but then I don't see that that the innovation that is that that's there is not being patented or being trademarked or copyright. That is what it is. The innovation is necessary. It is what, what is necessary that the innovation need to be uh, patented or uh, it need to be covered by the intellectual property part of it. That is what it is. And coming to the particular point of time, so far as five years down the line, if you see, there may be necessity of uh, strengthening the laws. Those are there. There need to be more conventions. There need to be more strictness to that effect. Now, at the time, as you see, because COVID is going on, uh, I must not say, but then uh, it is uh, something that would uh, basically be out of the topic. That is kind of a thing, but then ultimately it does cover. Reason being what? Because when we talk about the intellectual property, we are as well covering the basic the basic part so far as the generic medicine. As on time, I don't see because I haven't come across any kind of a thing that basically says that the the uh, medicines those are there or the vaccines which are coming up into picture they are basically patented. I don't see that. And even otherwise, these are vaccines. I must not say, but then these are, they say that it's a vaccine, but then does it really cure? That's what it is. Yeah. So, no, no it's, a, it's a very important point that you're picking up right now. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, please. No, you can continue, please. No, I'm saying it's you a very important something? Yeah, it's a very important point that you're picking up right now, talking about COVID, talking about vaccine and, and, and their patents and everything. So, yeah, please continue. I think this is a very important point. See, the basic, that is what I said. I wrote an article way back in February. I had a meeting with 22 lawyers at that particular point of time. And I told them that this is not uh, some kind of a thing. It's not a generic kind of a thing. If you see that, if it is a generic kind of a thing, I must not say, but then, Yes, the scientists, they are more uh, efficient enough. I'm not the person who can make a, uh, a comment on that. But then ultimately, any kind of a biological kind of a thing that is natural, you would always find a cure to that. Keeping those two particular things uh, at one point of time, if we say that, that is a, it is a biological weapon, then what is the germane that is what, what is not there? I haven't seen because I have been continuously doing a research to that effect. Even I have declared, if you see my article, you will see that that I have declared that the, the lockdown should continue till December. And even subsequent to that, now even recently I wrote an article I specifically stated that it is impossible for any person to make any kind of a vaccine. Because until and unless you don't disintegrate that particular part, you don't disintegrate, disintegrate the virus, whether it is a natural form or otherwise, biologically. If it is a biological weapon, then it is quite uh, difficult for, I must say that that they the scientists they need to the, all the countries they need to come together all the scientists they rather need to come together to understand what is the actual germane because it is a RNA based protein virus SARS-2 and so far as SARS-2 is concerned since last 70 years there is no medicine that is what is a fact and now the particular part what I understand being a science student I happen to be a science student I do understand that I probably I carry some head on my shoulders, I would say that as a matter of joke, rather. But then ultimately, the thing is that I'm extremely sorry. Uh, but then the thing is that whenever uh, medicine is being made, 
the ultimate part that is what is necessary to be seen is what is the germane part of it what are the addons if it is a chemical kind of a composition what all are the compositions those are there how they can be disintegrated how they can be tackled because even if otherwise if we make some kind of a vaccine what is important to be seen is that any kind of a chemical composition what we are putting on or adding on to our body does not have any kind of a allergic effect or a chemical reaction to that effect one more thing that is not can be, that cannot be overlooked is because every person is consuming some kind of a medicine some persons they are suffering from diabetes or maybe from hypertension or maybe some other kind of diseases so ultimately the thing is that that whosoever the person is already that person is consuming some medicine those traces cannot be overlooked so it's very important that while making the vaccine as per me i must not say but then that's a reality that it might take at least 5 15 to 20 years not less than that because even hyperbola it took 10 years ebola it took uh, more than 10 15 years aids it took more than 10 15 years and these particular i must not say but then this reality cannot be overlooked because these diseases happen to be natural kind of a diseases now here in when you say that a disease is basically it is not at all whether you have not come to a conformity and there is no inference to that effect that whether a disease is natural or it is a kind of a biological weapon i'll quote one example when sure. iraq war took place at that particular time when saddam was there and he had made n number of biological weapons united nations has taken over and has destroyed all those now the only part if you see what i am i want what i want to say is there is one probability the heat part of it these things where biological weapons or otherwise come into picture it is the energy only that can otherwise it's as per my opinion maybe i am wrong but then yes every person has got a right to opinion so i i just want to say that that i don't think that that it's possible yes i don't want to demoralize anyone i just don't want to but then vaccine putting it in the form of a vaccine is absolutely wrong makes sense uk is doing it us is doing it india is doing it many other countries they are here. before yesterday i was having a talk i am i was talking to people in namibia they even said that over there the, the vaccination is being started but then things are absolutely different what are what ultimately is the consequence to that is there any report there is no report so how would you conclude that that yes this vaccine is absolutely successful that's what that, it is that, that, that absolutely it makes sense and, you know i'm not say uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm inter interrupting you in between I, i'll just finish it off sure the thing is now when it comes to the intellectual property part of it you correlate with this particular thing why is it not patented if at all you say that all these are vaccines then there need to be a patent am i right so when it is missing so that creates a question that whether it is Absolutely. worth Absolutely. it or... yeah it definitely definitely brings us to a question and and a, and a very uh, very deemed question too uh, and i think uh, this is something that we all need to think about and Uh, but the vaccines have come. Uh, people have started getting vaccinated. Let's see. I think in a, in a couple of months or maybe few months, we'll see how how effective they are, and are they really you know making some cure or not? Uh, anyways, thank you so much for sharing that great insight with us, and I think a lot uh, to learn from that quick chat. Moving ahead, uh, I would like to talk about your firm a little bit. What all services you provide through your firm? Please tell us. well uh, uh, my firm basically deals into every part of it except for the labor part we deal into the national laws international laws and uh, so far as the firm part is concerned uh, we deal in the civil litigation criminal litigation international arbitration so that's what it is writs constitutions everything so uh, in india so far as uh, the courts are concerned right from the apex court down the line where from i started i would say and even today i go there i attend the matters because that is where from i started that is the, the district level part of it so that is what we render services we are uh, in house for everything looking to provide best of the results 
24 by 7, 365 days. That is what is my motto. And uh, that is what I look on to always. Amazing. Now, talking about the firm, uh, I would like to come uh, and talk about you as, a, as an individual a little bit now. So you have practiced into different areas of law. Uh, how it has helped you and how would you take it ahead? Well, uh, that is what the thing is. As I said, every day is a day of learning. Being a lawyer, I must not say, but then I don't know what do people think nowadays. But then uh, uh, being a first generation lawyer, what I understand, and that is what I tell my kids as well, I keep on sharing things that you need to practice, you need to practice every day, you need to do a research, thorough kind of a research before you implement anything. That is what is the most important part because so far as law is concerned, law is very deep. No person can ever claim to be a master of law. I must not say, but then that's a reality. So, and so far as law in India is concerned, there are so many diversified laws. So far as law of UK is, are, UK is concerned, US is concerned, Canada is there, New Zealand. Every country has the, their own law. But then, however, what I have noticed, except the particular part of US, because US being a federal country and every state has got it, its own laws. The, the part of implementation is different. The punishments, those are there, is different. But then other than that, if you see, so far as law of India is concerned, so far as law of UK is concerned, because most of the countries, they are commonwealth countries, and the laws, do are, those are basically there, they are derived from the commonwealth part of it, from the UK part of it. So most of the countries, be it US, UK, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, not US, UK, India, then uh, Canada, New Zealand, then the African countries, there's absolutely similarity. Maybe there's a twist to it, as per the, the situations and the circumstances. And that is what I have been reading on, adding on to things. That is what uh, I do even today. And I just want to add on to things so that, that I can make a difference in the life of people. I can give myself and give uh, some kind of a good work to the field of law so that it can help people otherwise. That's what it is. Because there is absolutely a need that there need to be a very clear kind, uh, kind of a position of law that is what is very necessary, what ultimately law says. And there need to be a clear implementation of law. That is what it is. So Absolutely. I just want to take up this particular thing. That is what is my motto of life. Sure. Absolutely makes sense. Uh, and thank you so much for letting us know how, what, do, what do you really think about that. Uh, moving ahead, and I will quickly jump on to the next question. And we, want, we all want to know, in the current scenario, do you think reforms are needed in law? Uh, and if, if you think, or, or do you think that they are already best suited? Well, uh, situations are changing, absolutely. Now, if we talk about India, the in, India has got laws since 1856 prior to that, when the, uh, Great Britain used to rule India, but then ultimately the thing is that though India got independent, but then ultimately those are those laws are still there. In the form of amendments, they are the, the amendments, those are there, they are there, but then do they really suit our system? That is what is the necessity. What is necessarily to be understood is that that every country has its own system. They have their own citizens, like as you are there in Canada. Canada yeah. has a unified code, if yeah. I'm not wrong, if my so, knowledge is not wrong. It has got a unified code. The code of the code of civil procedure comprises of not only the the uh, civil part of it, but then as well the, the criminal part of it. That is what the procedural part that is covered so far as Canada is concerned. But then here, when we come to India or otherwise or anywhere, let us talk about the in general. But then ultimately, yes, there is absolutely there is a need of reform in law. Reform in law in the sense. See, the basic part is that, that whenever a law is there, that's there implemented or made by the parliamentarians or by the law framing committee, wherever, whichever country, ultimately there is always a motto to that, why a law is made. There's an object. But then keeping aside the object, if the law starts working, then things are absolutely different. You won't get to have the basic result for what a law is framed. So framing of law is one part of it, but then the implementation of the particular law, what uh, law is made in a particular country, there is absolutely a need that there need to be a stringent for the purpose of implementation. There cannot be 
I must not say, but then every now and then there need not be any kind of an explanation to why a law is framed, what a law says. Law cannot always be as per whims and fancies of people. It has to be in letters and spirit. So whatever law says, people has to follow, people have to follow, and they need to abide with that. But then ultimately, until and unless the, the implementation part of it is not absolute, you won't get to have a result. So yes, so far as the implementation, I would say there need to be a reform. Not only a reform, there need to be a punishment to that effect. I won't say the very punitive kind of a thing, but then yes, the people they need to made to made to understand that what is the necessity, why the laws are there. Until and unless people don't understand, no country I would say that even despite the fact the, the laws are there, but then the country cannot uh, prosper. That's what it is. Absolutely. And I, I think it brings me to a, to a quick uh, follow up question on this. Uh, I think you, you rightly said that we you know in India, if I talk about particularly, we have laws that were framed uh, before India was was a free country. And yeah. we are still yeah. kind of uh, are still tangled into those laws if they are effective or not. Uh, and I completely understand, you know, you are saying that there needs to there, there needs to be a reform of, the, of these laws. However, the question is that how difficult or how easy it, it is to reform these laws uh, and the current scenario or the current procedure of reformation is, uh, do you think that this, this also needs to be changed a little bit? See, reformation of anything is not difficult. That is what I said. But then ultimate part is even though the things are reformed, everything is done, all said and done. But then if presuming if I am there, if I, if though despite the fact that I am a person who's a, 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 a member of the court, Fine, I'm officer of the court, but then if I don't follow that particular part of it, if I don't behave, if I don't follow the protocol, what would be the push, the question basically that comes into picture is what would be the situation of that reform? Would that be really helpful? So ultimate part is that no matter the reforms are there, but then there need to be a reform in the people as well. Then you need to reform the people, the people they need to reform themselves. If you yes, see, absolutely. I must not say, even if, uh, as you are there in Canada, you see that particular aspect part of it. People fo follow the laws, be it Canada, be it US, be it UK, anywhere of the country. Let us take a question of India now. Do they really follow it? See, my simple say is, if you cannot walk on a street properly, if you cannot drive on a street properly, I must not say that a person can lead the life very properly. Because that is the basic fundamental. True, if you absolutely. cannot drive straight, does make absolutely. a difference. I mean, I mean, just just sharing my quick uh, example here. When I when I shifted to this country seven seven and a half years back, it was uh, it was completely three sixty degrees of a flip. Uh, you know, coming from New Delhi, India, and uh, you know, driving there and coming here, and then when I started uh, developing my own understanding of this new country. I really realized that uh, because you know a lot of immigration takes place from India to Canada. Everyone knows it's it's a global known truth, right? And a lot of immigration takes place. The same set of people who stay there in India does not abide the rules. They do not follow the laws. They they, they follow they it very simply. Yes, and I'm they sorry, complete the mockery of it. Yeah, absolutely. This is exactly what I'm coming to. And when you know over a night, it's just a 16 hours of flight. And when they land here, they are a completely different human being. They start following each and every law. They know. I think, and I and I realize that maybe the reason is that uh, people here knows that if they do not follow the law, the consequences are going to be very, very uh, hard onto them. I'm not sure if no. this is the exact same mentality is is there in India or, as well or not. But here, people know that if I do not follow this rule, the implications are going to be very tough on me. No, even otherwise, I must not say. I'll just give a quick, a quick example. See, the ticketing part of it is there. If you breach or if you if you just run over some uh, place. If you jump on a light, fine. Ticketing part is there. People, they don't uh, give up things just like that. They'll simply do one thing. They'll go to the ticket counter and they'll, they'll pay over there. They'll come back. That is what it is. Here are all the things are, that is what I said, that when you quote an example that being an Indian, like, and so far as, let, let us see the difference. That is what is there. In India, things are absolutely different when the people, those who are do those who happen to be there in India, but then ultimately when they move to the different countries, now they understand that it wouldn't won't be possible for them.
to behave like that what they behaved when they happened to be in india that's what it is but then why is it like this no matter you are there in india but then ultimately your country is providing you with the things so you need to follow that particular part of it that is what it is absolutely true See, absolutely you know, you, i must you, not say I, right. i'll simply i'm sorry no please go ahead i'm saying you're absolutely I, right i i will just say one thing see patriotism is not something that you show the the uh, flag or you hoist the flag or say or you uh, put on slogans talk about things it is not like that but then the personal for the personality of a person should always be like that it reflects that yes this person does believe so that is what it is i simply understand that now no matter the kids the, the people those who are elders now they happen to be in school they went to school everything was taught what i understand that moral science happen to be a particular subject at that particular point of time and community living and everything but then what do we follow do we really do no we do not when it comes to the moral part of it is it not our moral duty i would say that that we need to follow the laws maybe that some person may be x y z or whatever if you are in a very big position that doesn't give you a special right or a kind of a privilege by the country ultimately every person is governed by law but then the most important part and the most important portion is whether you really i mean to say in general not uh, you in particular but then whether a person really respects the law of a country or not and to what extent so the thing is that right. is what it is yeah please yeah absolutely i mean when you said that people needs to reform themselves that's what absolutely. the exactly baseline is necessity of reforming people reformation of law is there absolutely all said and done fine you will frame new laws fine but then moral responsibility of following a law that is the most important part you can i cannot feed someone if there could have been some kind of a capsule or a medicine i would have fed it and within fraction of a second things would have been very different but then ultimately that's impossible so but then this particular thing comes from within whether i really want to or not that is what it is so there need to be a reform in people absolutely i completely agree on this point moving ahead to the next question quickly uh, internationally do you think there needs to be a you know consensus amongst the nations to reform in laws yes of course i do agree because uh, see though irrespective of the fact when we talk about the conventions and everything the conventions are held for the purpose of coming to a unanimity that there need to be unanimous laws now there are many such particular subjects fine that uh, that we need to have uh, reforms not only the reforms there need to be a unanimity of laws which is very important so that all those particular countries all the countries which are there in the world they need to be controlled and governed by one particular part there cannot be an amendment to that that is what it is because now as on time when things are changing that uh, the the uh, companies when it it comes to corporates or otherwise they are moving from one country establishing their businesses to different countries i do understand that the uh, laws the local laws of a particular country are there but then where a particular subject comes into picture so if we talk about the international arbitration part of it so it has to be very strict i would say that there is a necessity that the international arbitration need to be compulsory and very stringent so there need to be unanimity between the laws amongst all the countries that's what it is that is the basic need of time as on time that's what i i personally think makes complete sense thank you so much for sharing those those great insights with us uh, i'd like to move towards uh, the last question of the session today and this is about uh, a book that you wrote so you wrote a book on criminal law which is under publication uh, yeah. tell us you know in a brief i'd learn about the subject and how would you how would it help uh, the budding lawyers and and litigators well uh, the book what in fact i would not say that that i am not i am the person who has written it it's all the the grace of almighty ma vaishnav rani who has uh, directed me guided me i have just jotted it down that is what i'll say i have penned it out and uh, nothing more than that or then yes 
it is basically the subject basically is miscarriage of justice looking to the current scenario that is going on and uh, it being purely on criminal law basically uh, it covers the particular part of it so far as the the uh, torments those are there fine the police brutality torment and torture where in the a uh, person who is innocent though is made to be a uh, accused and subsequently not only that particular part but then ultimately the book uh, what i have written and i wrote uh, it basically covers the particular part that when can a accused be a victim under what circumstance because victim specifies under law victim is specified everything is there victim is basically a person who is either a complainant or otherwise who has suffered from the hands of a particular person but then nowhere under law under inter indian scenario i would say nowhere under indian scenario it is stated that whenever when and what would be the circumstance that a person who is innocent made to be an accused and suffer can be a victim so that is what i have tried to define taken up all the laws so far as the the miscarriage of justice is concerned the citations from the uh, national part of it that is the indian laws and so far as the different countries are concerned that is what it is so that is what is the brief line i have tried my level best to give uh, to look to it that that uh, best of the thing could come into picture it's all rest up to the almighty ma vaishno rani and her blessings only that is what I, all i can say no amazing i think you you picked up a very very uh, deep point here and you know Uh, talking about uh, that particular that particular miscarriage is is definitely something that uh, I'm sure people would love to learn about and read about your thoughts on this. Uh, I we would also love to have a copy of that, sir. So whenever it is available, let us know, and we would yeah, love sure, to go. Yeah, sure, positively, I'll provide you with a copy. Yeah, please, please share the copy with us, and we'll definitely would love to go through that book. So with that, we come to the end of the session. Thank you so much, Mr. Nayar, for sharing such great insights with us. I personally uh, love that chat with you, and and so much to learn from this quick discussion. And we we hope that we can come again on a on a quick such a platform once again in future to discuss more about law, not just within India but maybe international law. Uh, thank you so much once again for sharing that those great thank insights you. with us. Uh, for our viewers, if you like this chat and would like to have more coming from industry leaders like Mr. Nayar. please like and share this video also subscribe to our channel click away creators on youtube to appreciate what we do and have more coming from the industry leaders thank you so much for joining us today this has been a for next talk thank you